Hello everyone, it is Christine here. I'm joining you in my pyjamas. Um, it is my birthday and I wanted to particularly open up a wonderful surprise I received in the mail which is from the lovely Annie Claxton from Arty Farty Annie. Um, but I've also got some other goodies that I got as birthday presents for myself that I'll share in this video as well. But first of all, let's get stuck in. I've scribbled out anything that could possibly be an identifying factor. And yeah, it was just such a thrill to receive it this week. Um, and he hadn't said anything about sending anything. And to yeah, get something that I can open for my birthday is just a lot of fun to have a to have a surprise. I even managed to open it the right way up. I hope you're having a lovely day. I wanted to share a bit of my birthday joy with you. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? How lovely. Optimal print. I wonder if this is one of Annie's pictures. How absolutely, absolutely stunning. Hi Christine, I hope you find these bits and bobs useful in your textile art pieces. The organza bags have some of the threads, oh, from Miss Cheatham's collection. The small one is a pinch of her oughts. Oh my gosh. So if you haven't seen Annie's video, she got the most amazing antique vintage thread collection from Miss Cheatham. Um, I can't believe that she has shared um, a little token of Miss Cheatham's stitchery with me. That is so incredible. I'm so enjoying watching all of your stitching adventures. You're a constant source of inspiration and I feel very fortunate to call you my friend. Love and hugs, Annie. You are an absolutely beautiful human being, Annie. And um, yes, it was, as I said to you, it was, you were very naughty for sending this, but I'm going to enjoy every moment of um, yeah, sharing in something from your craft room. I love that you reuse your, your plastic wrappings and your, your boxes. Let's get rid of the rustling. I'll just, I might just pop, oh my goodness. Look at this bundle of deliciousness. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Okay, which way are we going to go? Let's start here beautiful um, jute twine. Um, I've actually got a, a small amount of this but I will definitely be using this in my texture um, pieces. It can also I imagine be painted with my ink tents as well so that will be definitely be useful. Useful and beautiful. <gasps> Look at all these wonderful pieces for my texture art. So when I'm talking texture art, just in case you haven't seen it, I got super inspired when I recently attended a Fleur woods art retreat and created this um, amazing textural um, little forest wonderland and then I've subsequently <clears throat> just have to get it down off my board I've subsequently worked on this um, coral reef piece I've got separate videos um, talking about the both the art retreat I did a sort of a daily daily update and then I did a video on on this piece as well I think there's two videos, one where I was sort of starting to think about it and then the next where I shared the piece and finished, added, added some of the finishing finishing elements, showed how to do these sorts of shapes using um, doilies. So yeah, they're, they're my texture um, further exploration um, and yeah, these will just be wonderful because in my little foresty scene I used um, these but unwound unraveled some of them and used them as part of the wrapping around here I've also got them going across here with little vines so yeah very very useful and these are perfect for the next piece I'm planning and actually starting work on which is a riverbank scene so these will just be fabulous because I wanted something to create the roots coming down through um, the edge of the river bank look at this That is gorgeous. Don't have any, anything like that as a trim. And the huge pom-poms. It's so funny because when I sent Annie her little stitchery swap square, which was the first thing that we um, exchanged with each other, and we were very good, we just sent the, the squares themselves, um, 
I had a tiny little pom-pom trim on it and this is like a, a giant version of it so that's a really lovely little connection but yeah again these will be so good for using in my um, pieces if I'm doing a coral reef um, and if I wanted to tone down the colours at all, although you do get bright color colours in the, the coral reefs, but these would make amazing little sponges. And what I found with the small one is you can actually, I won't do it fully, but you can tie them and they'll sort of form more of a circle shape if you do that. But otherwise you can just sort of, yeah, stitch them, stitch them down that way and you get that beautiful, beautiful puffiness. So that's going to be handy, handy. And even these in some of the, the foresty scenes as well. So that will be great. Oh, look at this. Beautiful, beautiful ribbons. Um, forming up roses on tulle. What a cool idea as well. I don't have anything like that in my collection either. And um, I think these must be sari silks. And I've never actually bought any um, sari silk um, sort of ribbons. So yeah, these, and again, just wonderful colours to bring into my into my pieces. Oh, look at this! It's like a, it's got a feel to it. It's almost sort of crunchy feeling, but yeah, it's got a great um, structure to it. So it'll be really great for wrapping and doing um, if I want to, because it will hold its shape, whereas a rope might not. Um, so it'd be great for wrapping to make things like anemones or other other beachy things oh a lovely little bit look at that and then some more I don't have a thickness of this rope actually um, but that will be great also because you can use the end bits um, but you can also yeah use portions of the rope as well fabulous 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 so that's a lovely little collection and then look at this look at this velour and again the different colors that that come off that i hope you'll i think i need to put get one of my other lights on there we go hopefully that's that's a bit better it's a bit of a dark um and gray day we were originally going to go down phillip island and go to a winery down there and sit outdoors because we'll have travis with us but we had to had to cancel those plans but we found another dog friendly um it's a a winery sort of restaurant in Hillsville up in the hills here um, and they've got a covered deck so that's where we'll go for lunch instead because it wouldn't have been much fun sitting outside <laughs> under an umbrella trying to enjoy a, a birthday lunch but this will be fabulous and again um, just the way it kind of yeah picks up different colors and the text like you'll be able to potentially make little little wraps could even be used for some of the rocks that will be so, so, so handy. Wow, look at this. Again, this is uh, um, something that I haven't haven't really... Um, I've got some block printed uh, Indian fabrics, but I haven't got anything like this, like pieces that would have been parts of Indian textiles. So that's, that's going to be lovely, and just putting little portions of this into into my stitched piece of pieces thank you so very very much and I just love how it's worn it's clearly worn it's clearly been been used and how special to to have that wow look at all these goodies so some beautiful fluffy and this will again be great because I can use my ink tents also to color it up so the neutral colors are fabulous Ooh, some ribbony type texture again lots to do with that and look at the beautiful sheen and again I can paint paint into that ah look at this I've got something similar from um, the reverse art truck of that actually um, I'll have to have a have a look in my ah that one's open I think I'm just gonna no, I probably won't be able to find it quickly enough let me just have a look a rabbit behind me a whole lot of things out for my, my thread works. So I'm just interested. Ah, there we go. I have found it. That's amazing. So isn't it incredible <laughs> that on the two sides of the globe I've got one that's a grey grey black um, colour and Annie's got one that's a brownie colour, brownie and, and into greys. How amazing. Small world, but that will that will be incredibly useful as well. I, I've already been thinking about how I can use this as part of my next next texture piece. 
beautiful look at those, those variegated wools and I just love the unevenness of the the way it's been spun oh look at these little the texture on it looks like little bobbly bobbly texture bits and it's beautiful variegated different greens through to light orangey yellows oh some beautiful jute this one's a rope. I don't have anything like that in my, my collection. That will, again, be incredibly useful. Again, potentially the forming up the roots for my, my riverside piece. Oh, how yummy is this one? Look, look, look. Oh, beautiful. Look how it sort of springs out. I'm going to have to work out how to kind of make this myself where you, it looks like it's wound around a piece of yeah string. I've been playing with some some wrapping, um, starting which I'll just give you a little, little taste of. I've been wrapping actually around um, pipe cleaners and that's one of the things I've done with a piece of fabric that had all these fringy sort of bits on it. But yeah, that's, that's very interesting love that look at that I could wear that happily as a necklace <laughs> oh look at this yumminess again I think these are possibly from sari sari silks love 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 oh look at this a thin and a thick all together so I think it's a graduating thin and thick I won't unwind it because I'm just otherwise going to make a mess Oh, just wonderful texture again, I think, from Sari Silk. Isn't that great? Oh, look at this. Imagine that on my coral reef. Oh, you just need little, little pops of that, that colour. How, how incredible. And a little. Oh, lots of lovely beads to add into my stitch tree. Look at some of them. Look at this one that's a glass bead with these beautiful little bobbles on it. We'll almost make that into a little fish. It looks like it's almost got a little face. Oh, wow. Leaves. Little baubles. Oh, there's going to be lots of yummy things to, to find in here. Look at them. Look at that bead down there. That could become a little, a little reef fish as well. You could just do a little fringing chew tail coming out from that how lovely look at that one beautiful okay so many goodies Annie you have seriously um spoiled me look at this fabric I just love I love 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 um the vintage style fabrics and ones with writing and where you can just take little little bits and pieces out oh cute little spool and then these must be the Mrs. Miss Cheatham's threads and some from her orts. <gasps> My goodness. Look at this. And to think that these ones were in the hands of Miss Cheatham. And that Annie has then, um, yeah, she's managed to unravel so many of these and um, so many of the ones that were tangled up. Um, she's got some yeah, great videos where she's... She's sharing progress on on that, um, and it's just amazing. But just they feel they do they feel so so incredible. Okay, I'm gonna have to make a special spot, possibly in my um, perpetual calendar of stitchy friendships, which I do need to get back to, to working on. I think it will be a multi year project to get the whole calendar created, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, that's going to have to be savored, and I think I'll have to make a little label so we we have it. Um, it's what's what do they call it not lineage in the art world it's not pedigree pedigree um what is it it's there's a particular word for where it's come from and it's sort of history and being able to track it track it back um i'll see if i can think of it you'll i'm sure you'll all be shouting it out in the in the comments look at these Annie, that is so kind to share these because I know you know that I was um, totally salivating over your your finds. Oh my goodness. Look at this, uh, Chenille. And the labels on them. They are incredibly, incredibly precious. Oh my goodness. Briggs. Yeah, these will get 
will get preserved somewhere very special in my in my stitchery. I do want to do a full um, yeah vintage sort of stitchy haberdashery because I've got so many old bits and pieces. Um, I want to do I think a little book to hold hold all the goodies. So I think these might have to go in their entirety into the book. Look at that one too. Again, just feels amazing. Thank you so very much, Addie. That is just, I know how precious these are um, to you. So it's just incredibly, incredibly kind that you have um, shared some of your, your treasures, your preciouses with me. But it's just so very kind. Look at this. Again, going to be fabulous for adding into to texture pieces again wrapping like wrapping around a not that I'd use this bead because the bead's attractive in itself but if I had plain plain beads being able to wrap or if I was doing covered buttons it would be great on that too or being able to kind of yeah create things on my reefs or other things even just adding bits of it into my stick tree as well I just love it don't don't have anything like that in my collection either isn't it amazing we could we can still find things. I wonder if it came from maybe a curtain or something. Oh, some they, I could definitely make use of these. I went to the um, the two dollar store, but I, I only managed to get a mixed pack. So I've got lots of colours, but the whites are great because again, um, yeah, you can either colour them up or you can use them in their their natural form. Again, using them in my my texture pieces. Look at this. A tap I've got tapestries, but I don't have beaded tapestries. This is incredible. Incredible, incredible. Look at that. Gonna have to find a way to incorporate that into a stitchery as well. Love this. A bit of a bit of grass. Again, I could take just little sections of it and incorporate it into my stitcheries. I hadn't thought of this as a as a potential supply, so that's very cool. Oh, and what's this? It feels like almost one of those things that are like a loofah or something. Again, I just hadn't thought about using using that, but what a fabulous idea for like spongy, spongy sections. And again, a natural colour, so you can definitely, I imagine it would take take paint, take my ink tints. Oh, lovely bit of woven. Woven wool, doesn't that feel lovely? Beautiful. Again, that could be good in my, my riverbank piece. Oh, what's this? So I imagine this could be used for the, um, the punch needling. It's, it's like a, feels like a muslin. But I think that would work um, to punch needle through. So I'm gonna have, that could be very very handy. Otherwise, I mean, yeah, definitely can stitch stitch into it. But um, I think that will be great for yeah for punch needling. I don't use any of the sites like um, Kimu or others, so I haven't um, yeah I haven't indulged in the. The goodies. I think my dad uses it, so I think he was going to track me down some monk's cloth, which is used for the punch needling as part of my birthday present from mum and dad. So, <gasps> dolls hair, which you're probably thinking, does Christy make dolls? No, but for the texture pieces, again, fabulous. I've only got a lighter colour dolls hair in my random collection. Um, but these, again, these could be fabulous for the riverbank um, piece, using them as, as roots or um, vines. So those will be fabulous. I just love that the bag even looks, yeah, it looks quite, quite old. Quite old in style. Oh, a beautiful one. I've, I've been using the quilt pins recently, but I, mine are all just um, silver, more modern ones. This one looks quite old, actually. And look at what's on it. Just beautiful, beautiful blues. That is stunning. I almost want to just put, I think I will just put it up on my board for now as, as it is. And then I can borrow from it when I'm doing like my um, my C, C pieces or felting it into my um, my pieces as well. 
and there's just so many like little bobbly ones that is just absolutely absolutely stunning oh look at this sheepies s-c-h-e-e-p-i or is that a j-i or an i sheep jizz i'm not sure actually now sheep i think it re reads better as sheepy so that's what i'm going to call it um river washed look at the colors in that beautiful really fine and that will be beautiful for stitching oh shells Don't have any, um, yeah, are these little, like, little mini conch, are they called conch shells? Maybe not conch shells. Looks like they've come from Bazaar. I think that's the Indian um, supplies that Annie can get in the UK. <gasps> Some more little treasures. Annie, you're so, so, so thoughtful again. It's just, um, yeah, you've really thought about things that I can use. And this is where I'm going to show I'm totally dyslexic at opening containers. Beautiful wooden beads. Look at this one. Look at these. Aren't they lovely? Oh, birdie. I still think of, yeah, little birdies. Bizani had them, a beautiful bird and flower um, slow stitch that she sent me as part of our the very first um, great big little stitchery swap, which Annie hosted. Um, can't tell you how many people have viewed that video sharing and is at his where everyone is so attracted to that that piece it is incredibly beautiful so yeah birdies I will always associate with with Annie look at those beads I haven't seen ones like this either they're very cool again with the texture work you can wrap your beads or you can use them in natural form you can have little tufts coming out the, the top of them um, so that will be incredibly, incredibly useful. I might put the lid on these because I can just see what's going to happen as I add other things to the desk that I will, I will spill them. Did we look at the pink together? I think we did. Can't remember now. And then I know Annie's been tracking down the vintage magazine. Look at this one, 1937. My goodness. That is amazing. I just love this. Free transfer of delphiniums inside. Because I know, yeah, Annie got really um, into the idea of the transfers. And I know she was, after I'd shared a video, or she might have been already on the, the journey at that time. Um, going to have to have a, have a good, good look at this one. How to make dickel lace or dikel? I don't know. How fun is it going to be to, to read this and look at it and look at the passions and maybe take some inspiration and even to look in my doilies and see which ones might have these, these designs. Wow. Look at that. Honeycombing. Hungarian. Now, I am wanting to make um, a book inspired by different parts of the world, and Alex's mum's originally from Hungary, and so I've been looking at Hungarian embroidery, so this will be fabulous for that. Bars of flowers on a fire screen. There's the most delphiniums on the front. Look at all of that. The acorn and oak leaf embroidered set. Just love the pictures as well. It's in incredibly good condition for from the 1930s. Make it in eight hours. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just go for eight hours straight with our, <laughs> our creating. Oh, you even get a bit of cookery. A raspberry cubes with vanilla cream sauce. Wow. Egg, sugar, flour, lemon peel. Okay, that's doable. Milk, yolks, sugar, vanilla. Okay. And then you make a raspberry whip with egg white, powdered sugar and raspberry juice. One ounce of raspberry juice. Hmm. 
don't often see sort of raspberry juice offered as something in the, the supermarkets these days. I guess they would have made it from scratch, I suppose. Love all the ads as well. Look at that. How, how beautiful. Oh, wow. Look at this recipe for suet crust. That's definitely not going to be made by me. <laughs> Shredded beef suet. Refined and coated with rice flour. Oh, yum. <laughs> ah, that is that is incredibly precious. That's going to be lovely to just, um, yeah, to just flip flip through and I do want to get onto that project where I will um, scan and then use or trace some of the transfers that the lovely Kathy Kathy sent me. So I will pop I'll pop this one over here and then I'll show you some other things that I got in my birthday stash. So I got a bunch of goodies from a site called Wool Chambers. Now I'll remember to place them in the description below. They're an Australian wool company and I have all sorts of different um, fibers the reason I went to them was a lady at our workshop gave me some of her beautiful green and it's eucalyptus fiber so it's made from a tree and it was the most glistening and gorgeous um, green which I used down through here and then she gave me some wool as well from that same site which I used around the outside as well so this is some of the eucalyptus fiber and then some of the the wool so I really wanted to get some more or get some in the green and then some other colors but by the time I was on the site and I found that they just sold really um they allowed you to just select really small quantities interestingly like 10 grams is a very decent size when it actually comes to you in your package because I basically got the minimums of virtually everything except for a couple of the the wools and most of them were only a couple of dollars um but you get such a decent amount. So this is um, a sheep. And I just love that it's got the information. So it's a breed that came from crossing Lincolns and Les... Les I won't be able to say that word. Lesesters. No, those of you over in the UK can probably say it. <laughs> um, merinos. Let's just say de de developed by crossing Lincolns and Merinos in the 1880s comes from Australia and New Zealand available in a large variety of colors and fiber diameters so these are things that I'm really looking forward to using in my fiber um, arts this one is interestingly a uh, silk sari bright blue so 100% silk fiber that's left over from beautiful Indian saris the threads are collected and then cut and carded together to create this soft and luxurious and look at it and that would be just brilliant for sea because I created a, let's back to my texture pieces so you can see it sort of in context. I felted together just some wools that I had to make the sea, but this has already got a beautiful mix of mix of colours. And in fact, it goes quite well with the sea colours there. I might even have to felt a bit of this into the, the outer. That's a great thing with the texture pieces. You can keep, keep adding to them over time. So that's going to be lovely. This one is a merino silk mojito. Look at the colours in this. Again, I think it's what they would call a top um, in that you can use it. Well, you can use it for spinning or felting. Um, but yeah, it's just it's something you can use on the top because it's already all, I guess, combed into the, the right direction. This one is pearl fibre. Cellulose fibre is infused with pearl pearl powder so it's got a beautiful sheen to it how fascinating I just saw that and I thought wow that's that sounds really interesting I just want to get a variety um, to be able to play with and this is um, just some wool but again it looks like it's been sort of yeah um, processed to the extent to give it that nice but it um, so the wool hangs in distinct curly ringlets, I guess, before it gets um, yeah turned into this. I do have quite a bit to get through, so I better keep powering on. Um, so it's cerulean. I still remember that from the Devil Wears Prada when they're looking at um, jumpers or something. Merino silk, gilly flower. 
Merino Silk Maya Chocolate. Oops, there's a piece of <laughs> wool floating across. I think I almost got a piece in my throat then. For those of you who've been asking when I've been sneezing recently, thankfully no cold or anything like that, so all is good. Um, Shetland ol or Olive, sorry. And so, yeah, beautiful sheep's wool dyed in a nice green. Again, that will be lovely for my sort of foresty pieces. But yeah, see how much you get even when you just get the minimum um, quantity. Look at this one, North Ronaldsay. They live on a small island in North Ronaldsay Day, UK. And they survive almost exclusively by eating seaweed. These are one of the most ancient sheep breeds that exist today. So I'm going to get to learn all about sheep as I'm working through this. But I thought, yeah, well, how lovely. I'll look at that. And then we've got some silk, extra bleached. Look at this. Look how it's just almost floating, floating off. Lucky I'm not opening this in Alex's car. I'd really get in, in trouble for leaving fibres. Eucalyptus. So this is some of this amazing eucalyptus fibre. It's made from the wood of the eucalyptus. 100% biodegradable. And it makes allows 99% of the solvents reused, uses less energy and also less water. So it sounds like it's a more sustainable fibre, but look at that beautiful luster in it. That's why I was amazed about when the lady yeah, shared some of hers. It was just so 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 lustrous and again that will be beautiful for making sea baby llama and that's where i got my felting tools from from a farm that um, was just above a, a llama farm look at that beautiful and soft so i think i'm gonna have to yeah dedicate one of my trolleys to all my fiber work just like um, rachel from roxy creations has done this is an Icelandic natural mix. Brought to Iceland by the Vikings. They're double coated. So yeah, going to be learning, learning lots about wools. And this is another one of those beautiful eucalyptus. And it's called Sunrise. I guess it's how the sky might be that pale, pale blue to start the day. Another eucalyptus soft fruit and thought that could be great for little coral and other other things another eucalyptus I got the virtually all the ones that were in colors that I thought I'd use um, and again they just got the smallest quantities a few dollars um, but just yeah that will that will last me last me for good it was lucky the lady actually said that she said oh yeah I got sort of more than what I actually need and so she said yeah just get minimum quantities if you're you're ordering Merino silk. Eucalyptus leaf. So this is the beautiful. Um, oh, so this is eucalyptus leaf. But then this says wood. Oh no, it's the leaf colour. That's what it is. <laughs> So yeah, the, that, and that's the green I think that I was yeah, using in my little in my little piece. I think it was that green there. Could be slightly darker, or I guess it could yeah just slightly change in the batches, or also when you add it in. But just yeah, so so lustrous. And then some more white whitish natural coloured wools and then some this one I think probably has been bleached maybe not sure several natural colours so that could be a natural some raspberry eucalyptus again well not again but another colour of the eucalyptus some earth eucalyptus so that's really what I went there for, but then a few other things um, snuck into my car. Some coffee, eucalyptus, some passion, very passionate. Marigold. So yeah, I think I've I think I've got plenty to, to go on with. Eucalyptus storm. Eucalyptus jeans. All good on the time front. 
eucalyptus clout. And then this is another wool. It's a sage wool. Corridale leaf. Corridale tropical mix. Look at that. Isn't that fun? And yeah, all of these look like they're kind of in a state that I could yeah, very well um, felt with them, even on the surface of, of pieces. Because they're all beautifully combed. That's another eucalyptus in chocolate. And that's fur, so that's also going to be great for my little forest scenes. Dream, a wool. And royal. And then white wool and silk. And then I think I got a large uh, one of the wools that was yeah um, good price. So this is Bergschaf white. So yeah, I just thought some of this because yeah, just having the raw, well not the totally raw wool. Yep, definitely has a sheepy sheepy smell to it. But I've seen yeah Martha from um, Martha Manigross um, using this like as pin cushion stuffing. But even just in the yeah the texture pieces, um, just being able to bring this into to add dimension. And then conifer. Some Angora rabbit, just a little little quantity. Look how cute. And some eucalyptus in, I can't see, cinnamon colour. Now I better sort of keep chuffing along um, because I will need to soon get ready to head out to head out to lunch. So then I just got a variety of um, spun wools. 100% wool um, but look at that I think the variegation sort of isn't a, a rapidly changing one but I thought what it gives me is in one single roll I've got so many different colors that I can even um, put into their sort of yeah constituent parts as well and then um, yeah and it's just a beautiful it's got a bit of nice texture in the actual wool the way it's spun so I got some this color I was a bit of a, I got a bit carried away, but um, I'm very happy. I'll, I'll definitely, definitely use all this because I'm planning to keep playing with this, these texture pieces for a long time to come as an addition and sort of evolution of my um, slow stitch. I'll still do regular slow stitch, but I really enjoy the texture pieces. Aren't they lovely natural colours? Some blues, some oranges. Look at those lovely colours as well. And then another graduating from khaki through pinks into yellows. And then something a bit of fun. Glow in the dark white. So I'm fascinated to see this. We'll have to come back and do a little bit of a... Um, I'll have to work out if I can film to show you it's glow in the darkness. And what I'm interested in is whether I can also... Um, paint it but I was thinking for some of the coral reef pieces and texture pieces wouldn't it be fascinating even the forest pieces to have like little um, glow in the dark pieces so even when these pieces are hung up on the wall at night time they'll emit a little bit of um, light so fascinated fascinated to try that I had one other package but I'll save that for an opening at another time um, but for now that is my wonderful wonderful birthday gifts just so so grateful Annie for um, yeah your absolute thoughtfulness and kindness that is so so very sweet and thank you to everyone that's been um, sending me birthday wishes I feel so so loved up um, and I hope you're having a wonderful day bye everyone